I've always loved hearing you talk about your father because he seems like the most incredibly supportive yeah, man um, in the world. And you've also said in several interviews that he was racist too. Oh, big time. <laughs> and that we know, we know racism grows out of a kind of hurt or not. In his case, I didn't understand him. I just knew that he wouldn't let white people in the house, you know, the little insurance <laughs> man and this, you know, and I thought, oh, that's him. And my mother was just the opposite. She didn't care who you were, you know, if you were nice to her. That's what her line means, yes. nice to me. Uh, <laughs> and also, we didn't live in black neighborhoods, you know, there were Hungarians next yes. door and Polish people and Jewish people. Anyway, but I just thought that was a quirk. And then I learned, I went down to the little town where my father was born. What was the name of that town to you? Cartersville, mm -hmm. Georgia. And a man there, his name is Walford, and there's a Walford Church, there's a Walford College, so we know who owned the joint. But one of the men who was a child at the time and grew up in that t little town said that my father had seen two black men lynched on mm. his street. Mm. They were businessmen, they had little stores and so on. And so he was 14. Mm. And he left and went to California and then he ended up in Ohio. But I think seeing that at 14, not the murder of some terrible person or the lynching of some bad person, but the lynching of two neighbors. Mm. And I think that's why he thought that white people were, what was he say, incorrigible? <laughs> you know, they were like doomed. <laughs> but listen to this, he went back to Georgia every year to visit family. Wow. And my mother, who thinks of her days in Alabama, were <laughs> the sweet, lovely, you know, little, Kitty, and oh, in the woods, and the flowers, <laughs> and my aunt this, and my aunt that. She never went back. <laughs> never. But he was, you know, he, I have probably written about this several times. He did a couple of things. I had a little job cleaning a woman's house, and I was about 12, 13 years old, after school job. And the woman was, quote, mean to me, meaning I didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had never seen a washing machine or a vacuum machine or a stove that was anything other than, <laughs> so I didn't know quite how to So I complained to my mother, mm. and my mother said, quit. No, I was getting $2 a week, and I gave $1 to my mother, and the other dollar I kept for candy. <clears throat> and I told my father, and he said, go to work, get your money, mm -hmm. and come on home. You don't live there. Mm. Oh, OK. <laughs> mm. This was it. I mean, it was a whole different. I haven't had an employment problem since. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where I live. I live That's here right. with your family, you know? That's right. But my father, you know, after the, during the war, um, those of us black people and poor people got really good jobs when they were not drafted. Mm -hmm. And my father became a welder in a shipyard, which was a you know, highly skilled job. And he came home one day and he said, do you know today I uh, welded a perfect seam mm. on the ship? And I said, yeah, but daddy, nobody's going to see it. You know, it's, he said it was so perfect, I put my initials underneath, mm. GW. And that's what I said, nobody's going to see that. He said, I know, but I know it's there. Mm. And it really was not so much good work for show. Mm -hmm. It was good work that he approved of, mm -hmm. even if it was hidden and private. And that sense of, you know, self-approval. That's right. It was very important to me.